Welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast with your host, award-winning author, Paul C. Thornton, a weekly conversation with the amazing cruisers featured in the Joy of Cruising trilogy, comprised of the Joy of Cruising, Cruising Interrupted, and new release, The Joy of Cruising Again. Each book is a compilation of features about cruisers and cruise and travel personalities from around the world. It's the next best thing to cruising, hearing about cruising from the unique and diverse perspectives of Paul's amazing guests. Hello, passionate cruisers. This is Paul. And this week on the Jerv Cruising Podcast, I am delighted to welcome Alana Zingano, creator of the Travel the World from A to Z, Facebook, self-named blog, and YouTube channel. Alana is a highly regarded cruise influencer. I consider cruise bloggers, vloggers, and content creators as cruise community champions and have featured them throughout the Joy of Cruising trilogy and on the Joy of Cruising podcast. Passionate cruisers like Alana epitomize the Joy of Cruising. They are so passionate about cruising that they want to share it with the world. Cruise bloggers, vloggers, and content creators champion the cause of cruising. And at the same time, they are champions to cruise fans by providing them with free, useful information, reviews, videos, photos, and cruise tips to cruisers planning a voyage and prospective cruisers considering their first cruise. It is a pleasure to chat with Alana whose channel I rely on for cruise reviews and information, and to share her story with the listeners of the Joy of Cruising podcast. Alana's content revolves around teaching and inspiring others to travel more as she shares her advice and knowledge from her own adventures and experience. Her continuous goal is to create a message about weekend getaways, cruise planning, travel and vacation tips and tricks, and excursion advice. She is incredibly passionate about helping others feel empowered when they travel. Alana can be found traveling with her husband, Raphael, who is known as cameraman within the community. They welcomed their first child, Valencia, into the world in early 2020. Both are ecstatic to begin to show and teach their daughter what the world has to offer. Welcome, Alana, to the Joy of Cruising podcast. Thank you so much. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to chat with you. I think this is going to be a fun chat, of course, as we both love cruising and, you know, a well overdue conversation. Well, I haven't met them, but I've read about them. How's your family? <laughs> Very good, actually. I uh, We just watched a sail away yesterday, wishing that we were on board, but uh, we're good. Still just enjoying life and getting ready for the holidays and uh, all the, the fun that's to come. Yep. So before we talk about uh, Travel the World from A to Z, tell our listeners about yourself, where you're from, where you live, professional background, family, anything you would like to share. Sure thing. So originally I'm from upstate New York. I'm from Syracuse and I am uh, living now in Orlando. We moved to Florida to be able to cruise more frequently and uh, live the cruise life. So, you know, that was a big decision in our family and so important to us. And so that was something that I'm so happy to be living in Florida now. And um, we're just enjoying all of that. I do do uh, cruise content full time. And so cruising is so wrapped up into like my personal life, but my professional life as well. And um, I love cruising with my family and and tagging them all along. And we often cruise as well, not just uh, my immediate family, but we often will be traveling with our extended family with uh, my in-laws and my parents as well. So um, we try and get on ships as much as we can. You're, you're from what I call the frozen tundra. I went to school, uh, uh, I went to uh, University of Rochester. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. So so there must be something to this uh, climate change, because when I was there a long time ago, pretty much it snowed nonstop from late October to to March. <laughs> and it was uh, <laughs> some massive storms. Uh, I remember a 27-inch uh, snowfall. So, so uh it's not as doesn't seem as bad from you know talking to someone up there doesn't seem as bad as I remember. Yeah, well, I hate to admit it, but I've lost all of my my grit for handling the cold weather as I spend so much time in the warmer climates with 
you know, mm-hmm. the, the beautiful exotic destinations that we go to while we cruise. So that's something that is, you know, it's kind of funny when you throw me back mm-hmm. up into the Northeast. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is cold. I need my parka. Uh, but yep, yep. I, yeah, it's, it's funny. L- like you, I did uh, relocate to Florida, although it was for, uh, it was for nine years. And, and then I, and then I moved. It was, it was too hot for me in Florida. It was nice oh, being really? close to the cruise ports, but, but I don't know. It felt like I could reach up and touch the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you now? So I'm in North Carolina. Oh, okay. So that's like, that's like perfect. First of all, you know, I, I still have friends in the South and, and my family's from the New York City area. So I'm sort of right in the middle of the uh, of the East Coast. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's a great, great location. I've actually driven uh, to Florida about three or four times for cruises. So Excellent. What what have you cruised lately? Talk talk about your your latest cruise. Sure. So uh, two of my latest cruises uh, were actually on two different lines and two different regions. I was on a Holland America cruise going to Alaska out of Seattle, and I also was on a short getaway to the Caribbean on the MSD Seaside, and um, there we went to MSC's Marine Reserve, Ocean Key, and Nassau, Bahama. So I like to try and do a lot of uh, different cruise lines for one, call myself a little bit of a sampler and getting a little bit of the different experiences with different cruise lines and different experiences and really giving a variety of what I can kind of speak to in regards to what I like, what I don't like, what certain cruise lines offer certain things and what kind of just is um, my style of cruising in a sense. And um, with being in Florida now, it's really nice to jump on some of those shorter sailing. So uh, mm-hmm. like that MSC one that we just jumped on was um, a short one, like a four day cruise. So you're able to, you know, jump on and just, you know, drive back home and be back home for lunch, you know, that day when you get off. So uh, it makes uh-huh. it really easy and convenient. So I, I do enjoy like longer cruises and shorter cruises and I pop them in when I can and um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, like you, I'm a sampler. I, I have something like uh, seven cruises booked, and and about five of them are on lines I haven't uh, been on before. Well, that's awesome. So, what what ship did you take to Alaska with with the uh, uh, how? Yeah, so ship? I was on the uh, Eurodam and uh, enjoyed that. They actually had a lot of ships going up to Alaska this past season. Uh, I believe it was six ships. And they also had, uh, Carnival had like six ships. Royal had a bunch as well. So, so many options to choose from uh, to to visit the great land and a variety of, uh, you know, different itineraries, depending on if you, where you want to go when you cruise up there. So um, that was mm-hmm. a nice wine. For sure. I, I always love Alaska. I want to go back every season if I can. The reason I ask which ship, uh, I, I sheepishly have to admit that I have never cruised Holland mm-hmm. uh, before, but I have booked my uh, first cruise on, it's on the Rotterdam. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and the other thing that's kind of relevant to to uh, what you said about Alaska is I, I just, my last cruise uh, was my first cruise to Alaska. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was a that was a great trip because it was what I call a double bucket list trip because I went to Hawaii and then 60 days up to Alaska. So I was able to check off two bucket list destinations in one. Wow. So you were on board for a while. That's fantastic. Uh, a nice longer cruise yeah. for sure that allow you to really relax, uh, especially with 60 days in a row and then really get to know the ship. That's fantastic. Uh, that's yeah. I, but I've also cruised on um, not the Rotterdam, but one of the same ships within that uh, fleet size for Hal, the New Staten right, Dam. Right. So they're very similar. Uh-huh. So I think you'll enjoy it. If I can make a recommendation yeah. to you, make sure that you um, try the cafe on board. Go find that early in the cruise. Go get some of the uh, bakery items. They have great um, Dutch apple pie. If you know you're into sweets or perhaps just your coffees, and um, also the mm-hmm. split. 
pea soup that you can get there as well. The ship that I was on Mm -hmm. didn't have um, the cafe. So that was something that I was like, oh, well, now I know one of the differences between uh, the fleet size. And that's something that I did miss. So be sure to, you know, grab your bites there because um, that's one of the perks of that size of the ship with Mm -hmm. how. Mm -hmm. So uh, when and what motivated you to create uh, Alana Zangano? Yeah. Travel uh, the world from A to Z. Well, I was always that friend who, wherever I would go, uh, came back and people would be asking me for travel advice. So whether, you know, they wanted to know if it was a good idea to take the uh, offer to get $300 off and get bumped off of your uh, flight with an airline and, you know, if you had flexible travel plans or whether it was, you know, the cruise deals and wanting to, you know, learn about a specific area of a destination or something. I've really always had a passion for travel. It got fully ignited, though, uh, after studying abroad actually twice. So it was just something that I wanted to continue doing and, you know, learning and sharing that knowledge. And so I then decided, like, I wanted to start a YouTube channel. And it was really getting over the fear of putting myself out there that I finally did it. And um, the rest is kind of history with then, you know, starting a YouTube channel, starting other social medias, and um, just kind of putting putting my story out there of, you know, sharing different aspects of, of everywhere I travel to. Uh, give us an overview of your various platforms. You mentioned YouTube. Yes. Um, where, where else can we find you? Of course. You? So all my social medias are at Alana Zangano, just my name. And I post daily on, you know, Instagram and Facebook stories. It's kind of like a mini vlog style, look into my daily life, what we're up to talking about, you know, cruise deals, things of that sort. And then, you know, I also dabble in uh, a bit of TikTok. YouTube has been, you know, kind of the the OG in this scenario here, you know, I've been on YouTube since the start. Um, I go through different waves of, you know, where I'm spending most of my time, depending on just the season of life and things of that sort. But, you know, I'm always posting on um, all, all platforms and you can just um, search my name to find me. I I see you on uh, uh, LinkedIn sometimes too. (laughs) Do you? Yeah. I dabble over there as well. I, that's one of those that I, I, uh, I don't get on as much, but you know, here and there. Now, TikTok, you don't do any crazy dances or anything, do you? Uh, no, not so much. You know, I I haven't gotten into TikTok as much as I want to. That's kind of one of those ones that is I consume more than I put out on TikTok. I'd like to mm-hmm. put out more, but sometimes it's just a little bit challenging, if I'm being honest, to kind of spread myself across all social medias. I don't want to spread myself too thin and get burnt out or anything like that. There's always, you know, great ways to repurpose your content. And if you are a loyal follower and follow me on every uh, social media channel, and you might see some of that same material um, repurposed across, you know, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, and TikToks and such. Some of that same Mm -hmm. repurpose Mm -hmm. but some of it doesn't make sense to repurpose or you know of that sort so it's kind of um yeah i i would like to do more but sometimes it's just a bandwidth issue as well of you know having a family and a young daughter and things of that sort to where you know i need to uh i need to be everywhere but sometimes you just can't speaking of, of your daughter uh I'm kind of jumping around here, but has she caught the cruising bug like her mom and dad? (laughs) By default, I believe, yes. Uh, She's up to like something like 17 cruises now. And she's... uh... Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Yeah, she's... uh, She'll be four uh, very soon here in about another two months. So she's doing quite well for a young toddler. (laughs) Wow. 17 cruises. Well, I have enjoyed uh, gorging on your videos, uh... I mean, I watch, I've been watching you for a couple of years, but in preparation for uh, this interview, lately I've been watching a lot of your videos. Oh, thank you. Uh, there's a couple couple I wanted to chat about, um, kind of selfishly. Uh, uh, I'm taking my uh, extended family, my, my daughters, uh, my son-in-law, and my two grandkids, uh, uh, and of course my wife, uh, taking them on a uh, Christmas cruise on uh Maravilla. and uh you know so of course i watch your video you have several on Maravilla. um so say say something about that 
Sure thing. So I actually sailed on Maravilla out of Port Canaveral. So now she's up in New York currently. So you'll be sailing her out of New York? Yes, out of Brooklyn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic. First of all, a Christmas cruise is so exciting. And I'm so happy to hear that you're bringing all of your family. I think your family and your daughters and the kiddos will love to know all about the uh, kids club and the program that they have. So Mm -hmm. that's something that my daughter used extensively and had a really good time seeing Do Re Mi, which is their mascot on board and just attending all the different type of events and the celebrations. They throw like dance parties that parents can go and like watch as well. And they will actually Mm -hmm. take them out of the kids club and even go and have like dinner in the Uh, area of the buffet which is so cool so you wanted to have you know a romantic dinner you know in a specialty dining or you just wanted an adults only dinner or things of that sort it's kind of different than some other cruise lines so I think that that is a really nice special perk and um, we actually celebrated my daughter's birthday on the time that we were on Maravilla so we got to enjoy you know some nice birthday cakes and you know fun celebrations, but with you having a special holiday cruise, you're going to expect to see lovely, beautiful Christmas decorations, Christmas trees, all of the garland and the ornaments. It's going to be a really, really uh, special experience and expect to also see certain menus that are probably really tailored for the holidays with um, nice holiday treats in the buffets as well. They always have a nice chocolate uh, spread, a dessert spread that you can see. And one thing that um, just pay attention to the planners, because I've seen in Facebook groups some feedback of people seeing that they haven't seen it, but in fact, they just didn't know about it or or show up at the right time. So they might miss it. So these these type of information is all posted in uh, the cruise planners and also the app. And since you're sailing on MSC Maravilla, that's one of their smart ships to where they have the app and the MSC for me. So download that, make sure all your family set up with that so you can get all the notifications and get set up with that. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Yeah, I, I am uh, so excited about it. We did a Christmas cruise, uh, the same group of us, we did a Christmas cruise in 2018 on Anthem of the Seas. In fact, it was it was researching that cruise that gave me the idea to, you know, I've written three books on cruising and, and they're really just kind of uh, uh, anthologies or compilations of, of other cruises who have interesting stories to share. And so I just interviewed them similar to the podcast. And uh, it, it was researching that Christmas cruise where I discovered there was just so many interesting cruisers and so many fascinating stories. And so that started a thing. So it was wonderful being with my family. It also was wonderful in that it kind of started me on a new uh, passion, if you will. Um, So yeah, yeah, we're we're really excited. Another video of yours uh, that I was enthralled by was your visit to the shipyard where Sun Princess is under construction. And the reason I was, you know, so excited to watch that is I'm booked on Sun Princess. So, you know, it was just, it, it was it was great watching you standing in a place. And as you were talking, I could visualize, you know, k- kind of visualize the finished product, even though it was very much still under construction. Of course, I've looked at a lot of, of uh, uh, YouTubes and, and, and mock-ups uh, and concepts of the Sun. But that must have been a wonderful trip for you. Well, I'm so glad that you enjoyed my Sun Princess visit because as and so glad that my energy (laughs) came through and that you felt how excited I was because truly it was an experience like no other. That was my very first time ever visiting a shipyard and stepping foot into the steel open structure and feeling it in this infancy of a process of a cruise ship. I will take that experience with me for the longest time. I'm so grateful for it. It was so much fun. We were freezing. It was so cold, but we couldn't feel it because of the adrenaline of how exciting that was for me. And I'm actually very excited to share that I will actually be headed back to the Pinkateri shipyard very soon. In just a couple of weeks, I'm going back again to see the Sun Princess one more time before her grand debut, just right after the new year. So 
I'm I'm thrilled and you can expect more tours and uh, more binging on that content uh, soon to come. Uh, yeah, I can't wait because, you know, I'm sure a couple of weeks from now, they're going to be, far, they will have progressed quite a bit from when you went there. When was that that you did go? Yeah, so I went back in March, um, okay. a solid eight and a half months ago. Uh Um, So now what will be so interesting, as you mentioned it, is the progress. We're so close to it being done. And what is so interesting to learn is pretty much how like around the clock operation it really is. And the amount of uh, basically the construction workers, the crew working around the clock, the welders, all the different people in some different aspects, like every part of the ship is being worked on at once. It's not necessarily like one area where all the workers are huddled. It's all over as we were walking around and exploring. And the one thing that they did mention, Princess Cruz has mentioned is how different it will feel with this next go around and seeing the different, uh, venues and how we're going to be able to see so much more from, you know, the new dining room and how the main dining room is going to be a a different concept for Princess Cruises with it being a three tier dining structure. And that's one of the areas where we're going to be able to see, you know, a big change from before. There's so many new things with this class of ship for Princess Cruises that makes it really exciting as well. And I think one of the reasons why I loved this process and I'm really looking forward to going back is just the little nuggets of knowledge that we learned of how it, everything, there's so much thought that goes into this to make it really this like high functioning uh, ship where you don't know how it all works, but there's so much going into it, just like how they had to raise the ceilings of the casino to make them be able to have the newest, latest and greatest uh, slot machines because yeah, slot I, I machines, remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like this is so fascinating. Like the minutia details because those Vegas styles machines are built for really tall ceilings, like in the Venetian in Las Vegas, and so they have to adapt the cruise ships so that they can have you know all of the casino players' favorite games. If you're really into gambling, which you know the all of those details just kind of blew my mind. The theater is another thing that is a really big deal, having it being this uh, multi-venue, multi-purpose space that will have the seating structure changing. You know, I am not always the best at using every aspect of my own uh, imagination to see all of it put together. It's sometimes difficult to see, okay, what what is this going to really look like? And looking at the mock-ups and then looking at the space of while you're standing right in it, it can be kind of hard when you're really just looking at steel. But I think uh, seeing the progress thus far, I think, and moving forward, and then hopefully then sailing on her for the inaugural sailing and, and being, uh, you know, on board to seeing the finished product, it'll be tying it all up with a bow. And then just knowing that, wow, I was there uh, at the you know, skin and bones. When you go back, one thing that I'm really excited to, you know, we couldn't see much of uh, your your last trip was the dome. Yes. Yes. There's there's so much, honestly. So when um, the, the thing with that was, is we weren't allowed up onto the dome and I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was like deck 18. They were still using the outside elevator shaft. So it was like, there was no way to go up there once we were on the ship, unless we were taking the stairs. Mm -hmm. Now, so much of this, we had to like mind our head, watch our footing, make sure that uh, we didn't, you know, trip and fall and, you know, step over some, some walkway path things. uh, And, uh, you know, very high tech terms here, Mm -hmm. things, I don't know, (laughs) construction (laughs) terms, but, you know, uh, we had these steel toed boots as well to make sure and hard hats. It was, you know, the whole shebang, but uh, we should be able to go up there this time now and getting a chance to see that. So that will be exciting. And um, perhaps the elevators inside the ship will be taking us up there because they didn't want us to ride on those, you know, outside sure. elevator shafts. That, well, that was just for the construction workers. So let's go back to the beginning, uh, Alana. Talk about your your very first cruise. Wow. Well, my very first cruise was feels like eons ago. And it's funny because I'm so thankful for all of the documentation that I do uh, these days, because it's it becomes hard to remember after cruising as frequently as you do about the, you know, ins and outs of each different cruise. Mm -hmm. My first cruise, I was 10 years old and it was actually on the Carnival Triumph. And it was a seven day cruise. 
sailing with my parents. And the one other thing that is really interesting about that cruise is, is that we actually lost all of the camera footage from that trip. So we don't have any pictures. So my memory is honestly very little of that experience um, because we also lost the photos and because I was younger. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what I do remember is talking to my aunt and coming back from the trip and telling her that I went down the water slide so many times and that I enjoyed it and loved it. And it was a great experience, but I actually didn't cruise again for quite a few years after that until my high school graduation. And we really upped the ante and we did a whole uh, extended family trip sailing the med. And that was our first time uh, being in Europe first time on a European cruise and I did uh the Costa Serena out uh-huh. of out of Italy and did a, a beautiful cruise another week long cruise and um that was a lot of fun but back to the Carnival Triumph this has kind of come full circle for me because that ship is still in existence but with a new name mm-hmm. and so now that uh cruising is my career, I was actually able to participate in the Carnival Sunrise, which is now the Carnival, what was the Carnival Triumph, now the Carnival Sunrise. You know, she went through a two month dry dock and, you know, or somewhere around uh, $200 million went into revamping the ship um, way back prior to the pandemic. So that was something really cool and brought it kind of full circle as uh, getting to experience the ship, getting a new, a new life. And getting a chance to see all of that come to as it was my very first cruise. And it was early on, essentially, in my career that I got a chance to uh, witness the naming ceremony for Sun Princess and getting to, or not Sun Princess, excuse me, the naming ceremony for the Carnival Sunrise and getting to Sun and Sun. See how why that happened there? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but getting a chance to see that was just really cool. And I, I, I'm very sentimental in those type of heartwarming moments in the sense of, you know, it was very special for me considering that I don't have all of those photo memories to go back on. Triumph, was that out of uh, uh, New York? Uh, No, actually, when we sailed on it, it was out of uh, Florida. Yeah, I I, I went on uh, Triumph with uh, one of my daughters and and my wife. That was the uh, first time I cruised out of New York City. But it, it was a it was a long long time ago. Yes, mine was a long time ago as well. That first cruise at age ten, I guess you were too young. Uh, but on the second cruise. Uh, did you get hooked or you, it had to grow on you? Actually, no. If I'm being completely honest, I was not hooked. Uh, I think mainly because it was my first time to Europe. And as cruising does give you the great sample of all the destinations that you get to go to, I was disappointed that I didn't get to spend more time in those ports of call and those destinations. So honestly, I wasn't completely sold. It took a little bit more time uh, for me to uh, try it again to where I was like, oh, this is the type of vacation for me, for sure. Um, and, and that's really interesting because for some people like myself, it might take a little while to understand your cruising style and figuring out what really works for me. But I think it's great to experience those destinations and kind of know where you would like to go back. That's the beauty of it. And uh, luckily, I have been able to go back to a lot of those destinations and experience some more of it on, you know, flying there and just going on in in land. And, uh, but also my perspective has changed as, you know, being from, you know, someone who just graduated high school as a, you know, thinking I know it all and wanting to to travel, but also when you're paying for it yourself as well, this was a graduation present. And then now there's a adult who pays for your own cruises. I know now that cruising gives me the best bang for my buck. So if I want to go and see and do as much as possible, then yeah, it doesn't totally make sense to do a cruise and, you know, check off some of these other countries on my list. And, you know, a Mediterranean cruise gives me that, getting a chance to see some different places. And so I've kind of wised up in, in the years that follow. So not long after you started your brand, cruising was interrupted. 
Uh, how did the imp the uh, pandemic impact you and and your various uh, uh, properties on Instagram and and YouTube and so on? Sure. So just like the rest of us in the cruising industry, it was such a confusing time, uh, not knowing what to kind of do in the sense I was uh, full time doing this at that point, and I also was a brand new mom. So. Uh, that complicated things in the sense of, um, you know, in hindsight, it all became kind of like the perfect blessing to be able to slow down, you know, have this kind of like really extended, uh, you know, leave as I had an infant and um, because I had my daughter just before the world kind of shut down. So it was a blessing in disguise as we've all kind of found you know, the the good through all the bad as we have to, in a sense, uh, to see the positives during mm-hmm. those dark times. Uh, but, you know, it was just one of those things where we just kept plugging along and got kind of creative in the sense to where I did have a community built, um, even though it was early in my career in the sense where we winded up doing YouTube lives and kind of did it once a week, then moved to twice a week. And we would do different things to where we did like trivia and we would do just, you know, chit chat and talk about, you know, okay, you know, what's the status of who's canceling cruising at this point at this rate and, you know, talk about cruise news and then just talk about general trivia and things like that. But it gave us an opportunity to not only have a little bit of normalcy in the sense of chatting with others who also love travel and cruising, but also just connect with the community as during a time where we weren't leaving the house and then just being new parents and giving us that little bit of like a sanity break where we could uh, chat and joke around and and talk with others who are going through the exact same thing of, you know, being at home and, you know, do we wipe down? on our groceries or do we not you know how is this controlled we have no idea what's going on at this time it's very confusing uh but we all kind of just went on you know what we love cruising we love travel and we're going to get through this and we we did what we could so what was your first cruise after the startup or restart my first cruise was on the adventure of the seas out of nassau bahama uh that was such a fun experience because it was the biggest grand reunion of all of my friends in the community who we all were like, are you going? Are you going? And uh, meeting up with those people, but also meeting new connections as well. I, I met some people on that cruise that I stay in contact with and consider good friends as well, which makes it all the more beautiful of, uh, you know, the joy of cruising, of meeting the people that that you can throughout this community. Cruising is something that has brought so many people into my life. And I love that, that we share this common, um, common goal, common hobby, if you will, and being able to connect on that level and, you know, share this and just, you know, talk shop about, you know, our recent adventures and things of that sort is always so fun. So um, that's one of those cruises that was like, oh, I have to be there. I have to fly there. I have to be on that first cruise because we waited so long uh, to be back on board. And it was just uh, very emotional experience for sure it was for me as well i you know i i remember my first cruise and uh, it was on uh symphony of the seas and you know i had been on harmony of the seas which is almost identical so you know it wasn't all that unique but just the fact that it was happening i mean i won't lie my eyes watered over so uh, so did you like so many uh Many of us, did you hit the ground running? Did you go on a lot of cruises or did you had to kind of slowly build up to it or? No, I really hit the ground running after that. Um, and for a while it was kind of, it felt kind of nonstop. I, I average these days uh, about a cruise a month, um, give or take. Sometimes it's two cruises a month. Sometimes it's, you know, not, uh, you know, one every other or so. Uh, but it's around that pace um, that it averages out to be. And um, it's kind of been that way since since the restart. And so it's it's been busy. Yeah, I guess I guess it has to be that way because you said your daughter has something like 17 cruises to her uh, to her credit. And she was born right before the pandemic. So, <laughs> so wow. Wow. So give us uh, give us some highlights of some of the uh, cruises that 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 you've done since the restart. Sure. So 
Uh, since the restart, there has been a lot of new ships come out and uh, online, given that construction on so many ships was paused, and it kind of created this really big wave of a lot of ships coming out all at once, or at least it felt that way. And so we're still seeing a lot of that. And this is a busy time of year in the cruise industry because um, in this fall and winter time is when we're seeing so much of the inaugurals and uh, these grand debuts of these sh new ships being built. So I've mm -hmm. had the blessed opportunity to experience so many new ships within the industry, which I absolutely love uh, to see these ships, you know, so early on is uh, the beauty of it. So um, like the celebrity beyond last year, seeing that ship and seeing the naming ceremony and getting it to experience that, you know, all of the others, Celebrity Beyond is top of mind because I also will be uh, experiencing the Celebrity Ascent in a few weeks as well. So getting uh, a preview of that and seeing what that ship is going to be like as it's in the same class. So it's going to be very similar. Uh, but all the others as well that I've had the opportunity to to experience um, because, you know, it's kind of one after another in a sense. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved Beyond. We went on... Uh... We celebrated our 30th anniversary uh, last October. And so we did a Mediterranean uh, cruise on Beyond. That's kind of my new favorite ship, although I, I, I think it's going to be surpassed. I just booked uh, Celebrity Ascent, but I'm not going until oh, I think it's late, late 24. And I'm getting ready to go on Virgin Voyages. And I love to eat <laughs> uh, and I'm not crazy about buffets. So I wouldn't be surprised if you ask me, uh, you know, six months from now, what's my favorite ship if I change it from Celebrity Beyond to, to Virgin Voyages. So, Oh, well, that's fantastic. If you're a foodie, I'm sure you're going to really enjoy it. Not, I'm sure you've been on Virgin, right? I actually haven't sailed on Virgin. I was had the opportunity to preview it as well, mm -hmm. um, but I haven't sailed. And uh, not that I don't want to, I do want to. Um, it's just one of those things where I've had to prioritize the different ships that I've been on. And, uh, you know, it's, it just hasn't worked out for me. I actually had one planned uh, recently. You can't bring it. You can't bring your daughter either. Well, that's one of the things that does complicate it. I do sail frequently without her. Um, but it does one of those things that, um, you know, just requires a little bit more planning, making sure that we have childcare, you know, grandma, grandpa, in law somebody's around uh, to make sure that she's well taken care of. Or, uh, you know, I've, I've also cruised with, you know, some girlfriends of mine, things of that sort, or even cruise solo. So I do like mm -hmm. to cruise, uh, you know, as a family, multi-generational family as that solo, you know, girls trip, those type of things as well. I've done all of that. And there's benefits and pros and cons, but um, sometimes it just it hasn't worked out, unfortunately. So I'm looking forward to um, getting that cruise rescheduled and hopefully soon. Listeners, uh, by the way, I think most of you know this, but ju just in case you, you don't, the reason uh, I said to Alana she couldn't bring her daughter is Virgin doesn't allow anyone under 18 on the ship. Yes, adults only. Uh, okay. So what are some of your other, uh, other highlights? There's so many, honestly. I think the part that gives me the most joy about it is with being, you know, this so-called sampler is that I've done so many different cruise lines and different destinations. So I have cruised out of something more than like a dozen different cruise ports of call. Um, actually traveling right now and I'm up in uh, New York. So I've sailed out of Manhattan. I've sailed out of Bayonne, New Jersey, you know, jumped to West Coast. I've sailed out of Long Beach. I've sailed out of, um, you know, Seattle. I've sailed out of Nassau. I've sailed out of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, uh, Port Canaveral. Alana, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the future. Some great ships coming out in 24, 25. Uh, what are you most anxious to try? I suspect Sun Princess. Yes, I'm, I'm anxious to try a lot of different ships, honestly. And uh, that's, I have a lot on my bucket list, honestly. And I think that in the near future, you can see me trying to do a little bit more of um, some different things. I think that that's one area that I want to make sure that I always try different things. 
I have cruised so much of different lines and dabbled into different destinations, but I think that's one area where I do really want to make sure that I try different destinations. I have big goals to go and experience Antarctica. I want to make sure that I try a, a Norway cruise. I want to, you know, see Australia. I want to really expand that as well. And as it's having just been uh, and done another Mediterranean cruise just this past year after it being, you know, over 10 years since I did a Mediterranean cruise, it's kind of re-sparked that sense of seeing other destinations through cruising and, you know, kind of expanding beyond a little bit of the Caribbean and Bahamas type sailing. I've done the majority of that, but I think it's always, um, you know, falling in love with cruising again when you uh, experience all these new type of experiences and destinations with them. I'm, you can expect to be always kind of, um, be very hopeful to get on uh, new ships and experience all of those. So, you know, in the, in the nearest future, I will be, uh, jumping on, you know, ascent in a couple of weeks and then, um, you know, the shipyard in another couple of weeks to see that ship again. And, um, from there, I, I do have some holds and some deposits in, um, into the new year, but I don't love to jinx it until final payments on those cruises. So I'll have to keep those as a surprise for what's to come after that, just because okay. I get a little superstitious and you never know what can happen. So uh, until final payments, I usually don't make um, full cruise announcements on, on all of those. Okay. What's on your cruise bucket list? You can talk about those because they're, they're not, you don't have deposits on those yet, or well, maybe you do. Well, yeah, my cruise bucket list kind of goes back into uh, exploring some more of those destinations uh, far and wide. You know, I've done, I've been on like 48 cruises. So um, I've done three Alaska cruises, two Mediterranean cruises. I've done, you know, West Coast cruises. I've done uh, Canadian coast cruises as well. I have done, you know, all Western Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean. I would like to, I would like my bucket list to be a little bit more honed down and grabbing some clarity on that. Like I experienced a bit of um, the Southern Caribbean, but I would like to do a little bit more of that. That means that I got to get on some longer sailings as well and um, not do as many three, four, five day cruises. And I would also like to, you know, get on, you know, those Norway cruises, get on, you know, so many different things. And I think that that's where I really have to do a little bit more planning. I'm the type of person who kind of flies by the seat of her pants in the sense where I generally, um, I don't plan too far out in advance just because one, that's not my personality, but I think coming into, um, the new year. That's something that I will be looking to because one, it benefits me with the wallet. Of course, the earlier the book, the more you save, but also it will allow me to kind of, um, you know, plan for some bigger adventures. So I'm looking forward to uh, figuring that out. Yeah. I didn't plan much when I lived in Florida. Um, in fact, mm -hmm. we went, uh, just my wife and I, we went on one Christmas cruise in Florida and we decided to go, I think, on December 20th, you know, so, uh, <laughs> but now that I'm, uh, I have to fly or a long, long drive to the, to the, to the piers of us, I leave right in New York, I, I am planning a lot more and, and planning longer trips, you know, I, I'm, I'm older than you are. And so, you know, when I talk about bucket lists, I need to have sort of a plan in place to, uh, to check them off, you know. So, so, so I am. In fact, one of the cruises that I have planned is is Norway, uh, not planned, but booked is Norway, and and then another one is uh, the Greek Isles. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, mm -hmm. it's time to start, you know, not just have things on your bucket list, but to uh, put in place a a plan to 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 pursue uh, what you have on your bucket list. Hey, let me ask you: Has your channel or your your uh, your brand have you done a group cruise yet? So actually, I had a group cruise planned prior to the pandemic. Uh, it was canceled uh, due to, you know, the shutdown. But I haven't actually gotten one uh, scheduled since then. I keep saying that I would want to, and I do. Uh, but it's just one of those things to where I haven't gotten around to it. I feel like 
I've been really busy and people are in fact booking really far out in advance. And that's one of those things that I just need to uh, be a little bit more diligent about, honestly, and uh, figuring out the time that would be good for my family to commit to that because uh, so many of us who, you know, enjoy cruising are are booked out really far in advance. You know, the average cruiser um, is going to go on, you know, maybe two cruises or three cruises a year, you know, if they're lucky. And um, that means that you are, you know, already booked for 2024 or you're already, you know, having some deposits or, or thoughts on 2025. And that's one of those things where it's just uh, booking that far out in advance requires a lot of work on my part. And um, I would like to, and I, and I really want to get back into it. So it's one of those things where I just have to to make a goal of it. And, and um, I, with everything that I do, I want to make sure that it's very enjoyable for everyone else. Also, do I want to do it as a last minute thing? And then a bunch of people who would love to go couldn't go because I only gave them like six months notice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's on the list, but I got to I got to get a little bit more planned out. Uh, Alana, before we let you go, uh, a couple of fun or at least light uh, cruise questions and then perhaps an oddball question that doesn't directly necessarily relate to cruising. So the first uh, light question, uh, I just asked this to, to, to everyone I interview so I can get some, some uh, ideas for my cruises. So what's your favorite cruise drink and cruise food? Sure. So for favorite cruise drink, I have to love uh, a Miami Vice for a warm uh, sailing. That is just like the ah, I am on vacation drink. That's something that, that, that is that, by the way, is mine. too. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's the first thing I order on uh, on a cruise is a Miami Vice. A frozen drink just signals I am on vacay mode, <laughs> cruise mode activated. And then for cruise food, I think it has to be the pizza because well, like whenever you walk into a cruise ship or you walk into the area that has the pizza, I feel like it's one of those things where you smell it. And then it's just like, oh my gosh, I know I'm going to be eating all the cruise pizza. So like Sorrento's on Royal Caribbean, you walk onto the Royal Promenade and it just hits you with that wave of the pizza smell. It's just the easiest go-to snack. And of course, you know, late night, got to go get a slice. (laughs) <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, listeners, uh, for those not familiar with the Miami Vice, that is half pina colada and half strawberry daiquiri. And some cruise lines are really creative with, with the way they make them. I mean, they after they're made, you want to take a picture of it. Um, yeah. Although some Swirling just... Swirling the two colors yeah, around. <laughs> some just throw it together. But but there are some who are pretty artful in the way they, they make a Miami Vice. Okay. Uh, next question. What's your most memorable or funniest, outlandish, or even most embarrassing cruise or port experience? Sure. Well, considering I'm uh, in the Northeast right now, I was reminded of one embarrassing uh, thing that I will share with you here. This was early on in the my uh, cruising experience here as I was doing a visit to actually, I believe it was Anthem of the Seas and the ship was in uh, Bayonne and I was visiting some friends in the area and I was lucky enough to be able to uh, schedule a visit so I could go get on the ship, go make some content, film some videos and uh, experience what the ship is like. So I wasn't actually sailing, but just doing a day visit. And unfortunately I made the very embarrassing and novice mistake of going to the wrong port. I went to the Manhattan cruise terminal instead of <laughs> <laughs> Bayonne. And so I get there and the ship is not there. And I'm scratching my head and I'm like, what have I just done? And of course, I was visiting a friend. So I had gotten in an Uber and went completely to the wrong cruise terminal. So that was one Uber charge. And then from there, I was like, all right, well, let's see. Let's look at the clock. Do I have time to drive from the Manhattan cruise terminal to uh, now to New Jersey and drive to Bayonne in another Uber? So um, that was a costly mistake and one to make sure that you are realizing if you're sailing out of, you know, 
the New York metro area that you're realizing that if you're standing out of Manhattan or New Jersey or, you know, making sure you look at those details, it was a silly thing. And luckily it wasn't where I was actually cruising. So I didn't have any luggage with me. And, um, you know, I, I was able to make it with time to still get on board and experience the ship and create content out of it. But it was one of those things where I will never make that mistake again. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think I've ever told anyone this. So that is a special nugget for just uh, the listeners of the joy of cruising again <laughs> podcast because uh it's embarrassing for sure but you know what things happen and and you learn from those mistakes it's just like when um you i've lived in uh, portland maine and people would fly into portland maine airport thinking that they flew into uh you know portland on the west coast and you know oh my goodness <laughs> yeah and actually there's there's an office in this has happened as well in like or what is it, Sydney? Because there's a Sydney in Canada and then there's a Sydney in Australia. And there's actually like an office in, I think, Australia or the office in Canada where they just help these people to where they've also made these type of mistakes before because sometimes you can just overlook things and not know, but it's one mm-hmm. of those mistakes that I will not make again. And um, yeah, just just make sure you read the fine print and know what you're doing. <laughs> You, you did make it to Anthem. Have you uh, had a chance to sail Anthem? I actually haven't had a chance to sail Anthem uh, since then, but actually I did get a chance to see her sail away um, just yesterday. So she's, I'm here for in the, uh, out of sailing out of Bayonne for a little bit until it gets a little bit more colder and uh, then gets repositioned again. Um, but she's still on my list. I love Oasis class ships. Um, I think they have so much to offer, especially if you're traveling with a family, they are so much fun. So definitely would like to get back on and, and sail again for sure. And knock off all the Oasis class ships and, you know, check those off. Yeah. We had a, we had a great time on Anthem out of the uh, Bayonne. I might've mentioned Christmas cruise where I took, took the family. So, you know, my, my, I guess she was eight at that time, eight year old granddaughter, you know, went sky flying or I flying, however, whatever you call it. So of course that meant granddad had to do that. And so, uh, so I'm going to see, you know, what what things that I'm going to try to match her on this upcoming uh, uh, Christmas cruise. But yeah, it was so nice having uh, Anthem out of Bayonne because they live up near near New York. So, you know, we didn't have to uh, get a plane. Yeah. You know what? I just realized I just made another. I'm sorry. I just made another embarrassing cruise mistake. I just called Anthem an Oasis class ship. It is not an Oasis class ship. So here I am again making. <laughs> I knew what you meant. I wasn't I wasn't going to correct you, but yeah, yeah. You weren't going to outs me? Oh, well, you know what? I'll just outs myself here. You know what? But I think that's, uh, that's the beauty of it. Because uh, when you do cruise, a lot of different cruise lines and cruise ships, sometimes it's hard to uh, boggle it all in your mind of the different, the brands and yep, the yep. differences. And so at least I caught it before, before we stopped this interview. So there, I redeemed myself. <laughs> there you go. So uh, finally, Alana, uh, you have a huge following and uh, welcome to the uh, Alana Zingano fans and friends and family who might be listening. Uh, We hope you have enjoyed what you have heard and we'll come back to the Joy of Cruising podcast to check out other episodes. So Alana, share one thing that my regular listeners and your friends and and fans and family who have joined us don't know about Alana. Sure. Well, one thing that people may not know is that I do love podcasts. Po- actually, starting a podcast has been one of those goals in uh, the back of my mind. So if you guys enjoy listening to podcasts and you enjoy listening to me on podcasts, drop me a line and say, Alana, you should finally start that podcast that you have been wanting to. And it's been on the back burner of your mind for a while because I always have so much fun. And I was so glad uh, that you asked me to be a part of this because it's it's just so enjoyable. I love talking and I love talking about cruising. So uh, thank you for having me on. This has been a lot of fun. 
Thank you. Alana, it is so good to get to meet you virtually and 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 add to my circle of uh, cruise friends. Uh, thank you for coming on the Joy of Cruising podcast. I consider you, obviously, you are a, a leader in the cruise community and will be sailing uh, great cruises uh, in, in the future. So I know we're going to want to have you back if you will be back. Oh, you were so sweet, Paul. Thank you so much. I would love to come back anytime. Uh, much, much appreciated. And thank you to the listeners. As they say, I will see you on the ocean. And as I say, ciao for now. The Jorb Cruising and Cruising Interrupted, each $16.99 plus shipping and new release, The Jorb Cruising Again for $18.99 can be ordered at the link on the com. For each of the three books, use the discount code Joy of Cruising Podcast and get four dollars off. The Joy of Cruising books are also available at Amazon. Order the ebook at Amazon or your favorite online retailer. Stay in touch by joining the Joy of Cruising Podcast Facebook group or following the Joy of Cruising Podcast on Instagram. We're constantly adding new shows. Please leave a review and tell a friend about us. We hope you enjoyed this brief escape to the ocean. See you next week.